and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, let's talk about workers' rights. Let's talk about workers' right to strike. Let's talk about what's happening across the country, um, especially now uh, with uh, so many Teamsters and people on the streets. But I want to talk about this thing in particular. And I've had a few audience members reach out to me about this. Disney launching a task force to study AI and cut losses as Hollywood strike rages report on. Now, again, what I find uh, a little bit enraging is how much of a light that these uh, Hollywood strikes have been getting in comparison to Teamsters and other groups that are really fighting against other large corporations, too. And I just uh, I'm, I'm just rather surprised by the amount of focus that this is getting. But see, the thing is, AI is going to listen. AI is going to be taken over. I, I'm so sorry to everyone that, that thinks otherwise. Disney's pushing ahead with efforts to incorporate artificial intelligence across the company, even as the technology is one of the biggest points of contention in the ongoing Hollywood strike. The Biber, uh, the Bob, uh, Biber, the Bob Iger run uh, mouse house has created a task force to study artificial intelligence and see how it could be used across the company. Reuters reported on Tuesday launched earlier this year. Uh, before Hollywood writers and actors went on strike, Disney's task force is reportedly looking into develop AI applications in-house as well as form partnerships with startups. Currently, Disney has 11 job openings seeking candidates skilled in artificial intelligence or machine learning. What could possibly go wrong? The positions touch virtually every corner of the media and entertainment giant from Walt Disney Studios to the company's theme parks and engineering group. Walt Disney Imagining. Oh, my God. Like, like, it's it's going to be an episode of The Simpsons where uh, uh, the Simpsons go to itchy and scratchy land and then the robots go crazy to Disney. Basically. Brand, yeah, that, that's what's going to happen. Like there's going to be a moment where like the mouse is going to be choking a kid out or something, which is supposedly the they're paying. Yeah. They're paying up to seven figures for these AI for these AI roles. That's why there's only 11 of them. Yeah. It's huge money for the people that they're filling this, according yeah. to what I read. Shout out to Payday Report. Um, Mike Elk over at Payday Report also had something about this over the weekend. We had we reported on something about the studios starting to bring in more AI stuff. Um, we're big against this, obviously, in using AI for acting. Mm -hmm. What they want to do and what the contention is, I don't know if they get into this further in the article, but they want to basically allow the actor to have the actor come in, do a read for one day, use their likeness and their voice forever and be mm -hmm. able to manipulate it, incorporate it without ever paying them another dime beyond that first day's scale. So uh, w one thing that, that should be brought up, too, is that, uh, and by the way, Miguel H., let me correct you in the live stream chat. Walt Disney must be rolling in his grave. Uh, he's His body's frozen. And for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, let's say Walt Disney's ever reanimated, right? And he looks out into his park. This isn't going to be the friendly Tom Hanks version of Walt Disney because he's going to be using some classic racial slurs and asking who let these people in my park. Walt Disney wasn't a friendly guy and he was a big fan of this dude. You might not have heard of him. He kind of ran uh, this other country across the Atlantic Ocean, Germany. I know no one can find it on the map. First name Adolf, last name Hitler. Nobody important. But yeah, go Walt was a big fan of that guy. If you don't believe me, we'll just look it up. Look it up about Walt Disney's infatuation with a guy named Adolf. Okay? Just throwing it out there. Just I'm just saying. So the company is also expected to report its quarterly earnings. And by the way, for those of you who haven't been following uh, movies and entertainment, um, Hollywood is uh, hemorrhaging money viewership is on an all-time decline and a lot of their intellectual properties have gone down the crapper no literally it has gone down the crapper they have gone down the crapper there is no saving uh, a lot of these intellectual properties like star wars or disney or, uh, or not Dis well uh, disney affiliated products but also uh marvel i mean everything is going under because of well i mean there's a whole combination of things of why it's happening one you have the CEOs and the producers. You also have everybody else adding in their own two cents. But anyways, embracing AI could uh, prove to be a way for Disney to innovate while also cutting costs. No, it won't. As a struggling media giant looks for new ways to grow. It is over. Anything that grows gigantic 
is 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 bound to fail eventually. Disney has been weighed down by a handful of box office flops, Haunted Mansion, as well as a sluggish attendance at Disney World and Disneyland theme parks. Well, it's because they're pretty pricey. Disney, Disney World, yeah. and Disney, how, how much? Oh, wait, as a matter of fact, let's do this live on air. How much does it cost to go to Disneyland? In California, well, first you got to get the plane ticket. You got to stay there, but just yeah. the ticket into the park is about two hundred bucks, I think, for the day. For oh, oh, good lord! Am I right? Oh no, you undershot it, man. Four hundred. Okay, so listen. Ugh. One park per day, three hundred and sixty. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Here, here, here. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Better yet. You got to bring this up, man. You got to show wait, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. I want to get this right. I want to get this right. Hold on. Hold on. Going to Disneyland. Going to Disneyland. Hold That's on. Disneyland. That's not even the good one, folks. I'm just kidding. Not oh. No knock to the people in California. Okay, so listen. A two-day ticket costs $385 for an adult. 270 for a child. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're hemorrhaging money. What a bargain. Are Park Hopper, three forty-five uh, for adult child, three thirty. Three. And what's ticket. the fast pass? Fast pass, parking, food. You're you're in for thousands, thousands. Man, I ain't gonna see this. Look, listen, 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 Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Jet from INN. Listen, if we ever go to Disneyland, you gotta pretend to be two years old. Just, 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 just say, just say you had a growth development issue. I'll say that. Like, there you go. That way you could get in for free and I'll just spend, I don't know, 200 bucks just to get in. <laughs> wow. Wow. Five day ticket. $415. One park per day hopper. Oh my God. Child 390. Jesus Christ. Per person. I got three kids and two adults in my family. Do the math. All right. And that's hey, before listen. we get on a plane. Listen. All right, that's before we stay in a hotel or we eat a meal. That's just to get into the park. Oh my God! No, listen. Budget, family, family of three, family of three. But you're you're a family of five. All right. So listen, the budget six thousand two hundred one dollars. Baseline seven thousand eight hundred forty one dollars. Expensive eleven thousand three hundred seventy eight dollars. That's if you want to really, really, really do something. You know. Oh my God. Wow. Somebody wrote a question. It's $500. Two adults could easily do $500 if you're not a big drinker or imp impulsive shopper. What? Ah, oh, man, no. Oh, Disney. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's no wonder why you're going broke. You cost too much. Look at this, Bob Iger. Listen, you're on the Titanic, baby. It's sinking. The Titanic is sinking. Holy shite. That is really pricey. Audience, hold on. Let's have democracy in the chat. Would you would you go to Disneyland? Type one for yes. I I want I want to see my childhood again. Uh, type two, man. No, it costs too much. Dude, my kids have been on me. They're begging me. You have no idea the, the propaganda. Oh. Now, first of all, between Disney Plus and the app and everything, like my kids are inundated. With Disney all day oh, no. long Listen. between you go to Walmart or any of these stores, all the merch that they've got out there, you know, is 50 times what we did. Everybody, I love you for, for saying two. And we, we have not taken our kids either. AOCIA, yes, yes, Sebastian, AOCIA definitely wants to go. Um, she, yes, that, well, only people that can afford to go to the Met Gala Bowl really can afford at this point to take their kids to Disney. Like oh, it's no. the trip of a lifetime for children. Like oh, we're no. we're gonna take our kids. Yes. Sorry, I, like, dude. Disney World. Okay. Yeah. Well, Disney. World, I said Disneyland is the bad one. Like Disney World. Wait till you yeah. find that one. Uh, out. Yeah, yeah. No, I just found out. <laughs> I just found out Disney World for one day ticket ranges from one hundred nine to one hundred eighty nine dollars. Jesus Christ. Somebody asked a question on, on Google. Uh, how much money should I save to go to Disney World? Using the above analysis as a guide, a good daily budget for Disney is around $233 per person per day. If you're traveling as a family of four, a total of $935. Oh, 
Oh, per day. no. No, per day. Per day, I know. Per day. That's just for the parks, plus flights, hotels, and everything else. Oh, and it's man. way more than that. And it's way more than that. That's getting, oh, that's undershooting. You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna have kids that scream that mommy, daddy, why are we waiting in line for three hours for Space Mountain? Oh, you gotta go get the fast pass. That's another hundred bucks a kid. Oh god. The whole I'm, thing's a scam, I agree. I, I'm 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 getting like an ulcer just thinking about this. Holy cow. Oh my god. Hold on. Children are expensive. Disney is expensive. Yes. Everything. They are squeezing us out of the entire world. They're pricing everybody out of this world. And they're making, you know, and again, the corporate media making, putting things on pedestals, making people want this instead of sh showcasing people that are growing their own tomato gardens and growing their own food and opting out of the system and figuring out how to invent things that can circumvent costing a ton of money. I saw some commercial about getting rid of plastic and all the plastic in your in your laundry detergent and all how much laundry detergent plastic ends up in the in the oceans and that's they don't want to talk about any of that stuff. They'd rather talk about this. Look, I know we've gone off on a tangent on this one, but hold on, listen to this one. This was posted on March 18th of 2019. Is a thousand dollars enough for Disney World? Listen to this response on Google. First, okay. this isn't a perfect number. Your mileage will definitely vary depending on your style of travel and number of people in your party. But it's 100% possible to visit Walt Disney World for under a thousand dollars a person, less for kids. What? What is this madness? What the heck? Oh my god! And then, hold on. Let's ask. Hold on. Oh, buying Walt Disney. Oh, yeah. Not to mention there's Walt Disney Cash, too. They're the uh, you know Disney's own version of uh Disney mining. books. It's crypto. Yeah. It's basically crypt Disney crypto, which is yeah. You know, this is where we're going. The company store. I sold my store to the to my sold my soul to the company store. You can buy Disney bucks and Disney crypto and then spend it at the Disney store and Disney parks. And I'm sure it is um no man discounted you can get merchandise and things discounted because you're using their bucks and they hold on to most of your bucks that you don't end up spending and you just sit on on a bank account of disney bucks that are only good in their location this is what unfortunately the commoditization in most of crypto is doing because you cannot exchange crypto in a lot of cases for things other than other crypto and by the way you got a nice fee along the way so your crypto ends up becoming a little bit less every time you have to transact my God. Sorry, I'm on my I'm off my crypto soapbox. OK, so real quick, I want to pull this up here because uh, because, you know, we're kind of going off a little bit off a tangent here. But again, Disney's launching AI task force, you know, to go after the, uh, you know, the writers and the actors, because that's what these movie corporations are going to do. That, of course, that's what they're going to do. But also, let's pull this up here, too, because here's what's also being ignored. Shout out to Case Study QB, who's wrongly being censored. Uh, yellow trunking uh, who believe that Teamsters refused to negotiate to gain lever leverage against UPS and Amazon. So, of course, Fox News is going to be uh, giving its opinion on these strikers. So let's let's face it, folks. There, there's going to be a big old general strike happening very, very soon. Yellow's lawyer, Mark Kazowitz, telling Fox Business he he feels pretty good about how the creditors in the case, including Uncle Sam will fare as the company plans to liquidate the assets. Joining us now with more detail and more news is Charlie. Who's back from Italy? <laughs> Italy. Italy. Um, wearing yellow. Yeah, That's that strange. was that was not intended, by the way. Um, these are one of these stories that you predict, but you don't want to be able to predict it. I mean, yeah. that is 20,000, 30,000 people are going to be out of, out of a job because of this. 20,000 Teamsters. And the and we were first to report this. Um, Mark Haswitz came on the claim and countdown, um, I would say, about three weeks ago, right before the filing, and said, they're going to file if the Teamsters yeah. don't agree to some modest, Modest, modest give, give backs. Teamsters didn't. You got to ask why the Teamsters didn't. Um, Sean O'Brien is, is very, very intransigent. Actually posted on Twitter about a month ago a rest in peace sort of a gravestone about Yellow being dead. I mean, think about it. He was, they were playing horrible to hardball even with their members. So you got to ask why would they do something like this? Um, people inside Yellow tell Fox Business they believe that Mr. O'Brien believes that he has bigger fish to fry. Yes, 20,000 union jobs evaporated here. 
Um, but uh, he's got he's, he's going up against UPS. They just I think cut a deal with UPS. Mm-hmm. The biggest fish to fry, from what I understand, is Amazon. He is going after Amazon. He wants to unionize the Amazon workforce. And what he's basically saying is, listen, we will play wicked hardball. Our members, we will we will put a company out of business if we have to. Can I and just that, play least, devil's advocate? Let me just make this, make this point, and this because this is key. The givebacks that Yellow was asking for were hardly draconian. Okay. Ah, leave the Fox what? News. Leave the Fox News to be what? all. Indy, take it away. I know you're upset. You mean funding people's pensions? The problem is the Yellow's sales department blew out. All right. The problem is that Amazon came and took away a lot of their business. And this LTL, and this is what they sell, is this less than a truckload of business. That's that's what Yellow's primary operating model is. Basically got eaten up by Amazon. And it's a terrible thing that happened. Um, Their sales department and their management couldn't shift and figure out a way to adjust for that. And now 30,000 people are out their jobs. The corporate pension that was being funded is now no longer being funded. Now the pensions that were there are still going to be there. My guess is that some venture capital company, some vulture capital company will come in, will load up the company full of debt, suck out the pension dry. All right. Just like they did to Kmart and, and Sears and just like they've done to Toys R Us. They'll leverage buy out the hell out of this thing. They'll suck suck all the cash out and they'll kick it up to the investor class. And this is what I'm worried about with Yellow Freight. Um, Mm -hmm. You had people that that toiled for 30 years and this is a 94-year-old company. It's a shame. Um, This is what consolidation is doing. This is what Amazon, Walmart, and these mega corporations were allowing them to do by not putting further regulations. Um. Yeah. Well, it sucks. I, I, again, again, look, uh, a lot of these uh, workers, you know, because I know you guys have done a phenomenal job in reporting with what's, what's happening with Amazon Union and Chris Smalls, um, because let's face it, um, you know, as much as I want to see that organization succeed, uh, I, 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 I don't I don't know what's going to be happening with that whole momentum of Amazon union workers actually becoming a force due to many questionable activities done by Chris Smalls. Okay. Now, look, nobody's perfect, but you know, I think Colin Radix Carter has done some fantastic breakdowns. Again, Colin's part of INN in regards mm-hmm. to um, the Amazon uh, labor movement. Hey, there were like drivers might have to move a, a, you know, listen, I almost, I worked at UPS when I was a kid. There are very strict rules about what you can do based on what the Teamsters say. They're almost insanely strict. Uh, yes. It, it basically cuts down on productivity in a major way. And that's no. some of the stuff that... Do you want to correct the record on, on that? Because obviously these Fox News jagoffs are never going to really talk about unions and workers and all that other stuff. Unions in general, and I, and Colin is screaming at his at his screen right now, unions are the compromise. Because first of all, unions are primarily... Corporate structured organizations, top down, that are not necessarily, yes, they're there to negotiate on behalf of the workers, but they're there to get the best deal possible on behalf of, you know, a collective in which nobody ends up happy. The union doesn't end up happy and corporate doesn't end up happy. And that's supposedly the best case scenario deal that the workers never get whatever they're asking for. You always need to ask a, wh- a lot more than what you're asking for to be able to settle on what you actually want in the first place. The answer is worker-owned co-ops and workers owning the means of production, in case anybody's wondering. Um, and wh- that's what we at INN talk about, which is how do, and now it takes a lot more work and participation from the, uh, fr- from the workers in, you know, in, in the business. They actually have to contribute, but you become an owner. You have invested stake and you're now participating in the profitability of that organization to the point that is fair and right. You're not having a CEO and an executive board gouge out the majority of the profits from your organization and then leave the workers high, dry. Then they disappear from the org, sell it out to a a hedge fund and the pensions disappear as well. That's what's been happening in corporate America for 30 plus years. Agreed. That the company was asking for here, not major stuff, not, 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 they weren't asking for, 
uh, give backs. They weren't asking for lower wages. They weren't, I mean, they were, they were essentially saying just do stuff that makes you more productive. And, and they said, no, how no. teamsters did. Well, let's face it. This is also Fox business. Okay. So, you know, you, listen, listen, I, I, I understand where people uh, might come from this perspective, but the thing is, listen, it's impossible to own a home or even rent an apartment now in certain major metropolitan cities. Uh, it is very difficult to get on by and wages need to increase. We don't have health care in this country. We have the worst health care system in the world. OK, uh, we have a lack of clean drinking water. We have a lack of, uh, you know, again, safe environments. We have a school shutting down so much more and people are barely struggling to make their ends to make ends meet and it's it, there does come a point where it's like okay these corporations a lot of corporations especially during 2020 raked in a huge amount of profits all the while workers were kind of left uh you know holding squeeze the not giving yeah. any not giving any any raises no hazard pay for being out there while while the the uh, lap, uh, laptop class was locked down in their homes um yeah. they were out there taking risk uh, on top of the fact that they want these guys to be, quote unquote, more productive, dude, you should go into one of these warehouses and watch how these guys actually do work, especially a UPS Teamsters warehouse. We've got Luigi Morris, who is a UPS Teamster. They have to load hundreds of packages on a truck every hour, on multiple trucks every hour. I mean, the, the workload, and not only that, they're only getting part. Now, these yellow guys were different, but the UPS guys are only getting part-time wages more than half the workforce is part-timers that are earning less than $20 an hour right now. And they're standing out there in 100 degree heat, 120 degree trucks, baking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I also want to uh, address this here too. Look, um, it, it, is, it is right now becoming extremely, extremely difficult uh, for Americans to purchase even basic goods or pay the bills. Like there are serious decisions that be, be it single people or families have to come to terms as of how they're, how they're going to get on by with certain, without certain uh, luxuries or, you know, uh, nice things to, you know, make them comfortable. And the thing is um, these corporations, if they could, they, they, they'd automate everything and have AI run everything while the rest of us are outside uh, rubbing uh, sticks together. Negotiate with UPS. UPS negotiated with the Teamsters. But keep in mind that Yellow Roadway over the past decade has made some very expensive acquisitions and they had debt and they management. I'm right. sure the Teamsters would argue had made a lot of so, mistakes. So you put 20,000 people out of work. I, 30. 30,000. I'm not saying that's I mean, the right think, thing to think do, about how why should the truckers no, have to shoulder the what huge were they show, What were they shouldering? Well, as you say, they weren't asking for major givebacks, but I'm just saying, no, I'm, I'm, just, trying to but, but I'm just point. saying there was no point. I mean, there is, okay, again, shout out to this lady here, was, who's, least, who's least bringing yeah, out. Yeah, she's like, trying. Like, yeah, she's trying as much as she can. The producer's probably yelling in her ear. But no, like, again, a lot of these truck drivers, Okay, I have a friend of a friend who told who you know told me a story about what one of their family members who is a trucker, right? Um, this was like what this was like 2019 or something before the world went crazy. Um, and it, it was it was actually at one of our open houses at our old studio uh, at Lawrence and Kimball, and I was listening to him and they're telling me like what what their family member has to go through um, to be a uh, to be a truck driver, and it's like, dude, yeah. like so, sometimes. Sometimes they're on the road awake more than 48 hours because they got a deadline. Okay. And, you know, we, we talked about the Amazon truckers who have to wear adult diapers because they're being timed and uh, they can't take bathroom breaks. So they're yep. literally wearing adult diapers and defecating in the, on themselves just to meet a quota. Like, again, a lot of burns being put on these truck drivers. It's, it, it is, it is, um, shocking and it comes to no surprise why there's why there's so many truck accidents on the road because of the whip that's being hit put on their backs i mean it's stupid because and here's why i'm not saying you're stupid i think his yeah. point is stupid he, oh my god if, if you're telling me that we're not going to cut your pension we're not going to cut your wage we just need you to consolidate some of your duties so we can save on productivity and we think we can make a go of this well, then, you know, that's like minor stuff. Uh, there's a bigger thing here, Liz. It's not this. This guy wanted to show Amazon. No, the answer is that's executive board needs to make the cuts. 
It's not, mm-hmm. it doesn't need to come from the workers. It needs to come from management. It needs to come from people that won't actually deliver on anything for their clients. But it's over at this point. They're filing and someone's going to scoop them up on the cheap and get rid of the entire workforce and figure out a way to squeeze the pension. It's it's really sad to see what's what's happening here. Now, when you're talking about what's happening with Amazon, you know, what Chris Smalls is trying to do is only unionize at this point one facility. And he's trying to help two or three others organize. But there are hundreds of Amazon facilities nationwide, which is why the Teamsters in two years ago started to get involved and try to make a nationwide and more of a nationwide effort. You need much more of a structure like the Teamsters have. You need a huge organization to be able to communicate mm-hmm. cross warehouse. Plus, you need a person in every warehouse that's willing to represent them as well as be part of whatever organization, unionization they're going to join. It's a, it is a huge climb, but the only way workers are going to get any kind of representation and fight against these corporations is if they organize and fight together. Precisely. Precisely. Let's listen to a few sec- last seconds in this as this Jagoff speaks. That's their next target. Right. That we will go. Yeah, FedEx. We will, FedEx. We will go to the mat. We are not playing around. We will put a company out of business. At least that's what people at Yellow believe. And I, th- I think they make a good case. All right. So what can we take away from all of this? Well, uh, major movie studios like Disney, uh, not only does it cost an arm and a leg to visit their little parks, but they are looking at AI and automation to replace actors, writers, and so much more. But also, on the other hand, too, uh, there are other strikes that are happening that uh, workers across this country are dealing with and corporations are getting the final say. So uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when we see our system fail and consume itself, uh, we, the people, are left wondering who will fight for us. You think the politicians will? The answer is they won't because the politicians are owned by the corporations. I want to say things are going to get better, folks. But so long as we contribute to the two-party system that are owned by the corporations, Wall Street inv- uh, investors, uh, big banks, lobby groups, nothing will change. Nothing will change because they want to automate everything.